Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for another opportunity he has given to us to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. And you and I know that the bread of life will break regularly on this channel is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. <laughs> well, I know that a lot of people, a lot of you have missed me. And I've missed all of you as well. But thank God for another opportunity. We have to break this bread of life, you know. And I'm so excited. Now, quickly, before we go into it, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. Go to YouTube, type Apostle Victor James. You'll be amazed. We have loads of teaching right there that will be a blessing, both to you and your loved ones. And you can tell somebody about it. And this is what I want you to do for me. As an encourage, a way of encouraging me. I need you to please press the subscription button. Press that subscription button and I know that the Lord will bless you for it and I will be encouraged. Amen. Second announcement. If you are a minister, maybe you are a pastor, an apostle, a prophet, a teacher, bishop, a singer, choir member, intercessory department, cleaning usher, whatever thing you do, you know, in the body of Christ. And you need um, a body of ministers to submit to, to identify with, to fellowship with, you know. Let me invite you. Every two Mondays, by the grace of God, the Lord has given me a privilege and the opportunity to father and to mentor ministers all over the world. And we meet right here in Lagos every two Mondays. Every two Mondays by... 9 a.m. right here in Lagos. So if you want to be a part of it, you want to be a part of that minister's fellowship, the body of ministers. And believe me, we come together to learn about Jesus and to empower each other. So if you want to be a part of it, please, you will see phone numbers that we're going to be displaying later. Call the phone number to know the next day. If you are in Lagos, anywhere in Lagos or Ogun State, you know, you got to be a part of this. This is very important. And if you are not in Lagos, you should let us know you want to be a part of it. You know, a part of this minister's fellowship that God has given me grace to mentor and to provide covering for all these ministers. Let me know. And I believe God that in Jesus' name, you will be blessed. Amen. All right. Let's quickly go into this, into breaking today's bread. Um, and I believe that the Lord has put something in my heart for everybody, wherever you're watching, all over the world. You know, as we step into, you know, all that God has for us in this new year, this, this glorious year. Amen. As we step into it, I believe that the Lord has good things for us because it's our year of showing forth. We're going to be showing forth the goodness, the grace, the love, the power, and the effectiveness of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives and those all around us. And you and I remember, the Lord told us at the beginning of this year that the devil, Satan, has left us. So right now, angels are ministering to us. So in order for us to keep in that word, that promise that the Lord gave to us for this year, you know, I, want us, I wanted to see something, you know, together in the word of God. Amen. To help our mind and heart to conform in the leading of the Spirit of God for our lives in Jesus' precious name. All right, watch this. In Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Let's start with Second Peter. The book of Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. This is very, very, very important. I need you to follow it. The Bible said, let me use this thing. It said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness are you seeing that but his long suffering towards what not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance i have a different translation here let me read this translation this translation is very beautiful he said the lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some as some people count slowness God is not slow. The promises of God are not without power or ability. 
for fulfillment. No, it's just that you see, God's promises does not only cover good things, so to speak. You know, God promised that there's going to come judgment, there's going to come condemnation, there's going to come the wrath of God, you know, and this will be poured out on those who do not believe in Jesus Christ, who do not turn to Jesus as Lord and Savior. You see, so that's a promise, an outstanding promise. So the Bible says God is not slow concerning his promise. It's just that he doesn't want anybody to perish. He doesn't want anybody to be destroyed. So he, that's why, you see, God is delaying the coming of, so to speak, delaying the coming of the Lord Jesus, giving everybody ample opportunity to accept Jesus and become, uh, and become saved. But to us who are born again already, who are children of God, who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Ability to perform is not in question when it comes to God. I'm going to say that again. Ability to perform is never in question when it comes to God. Did you get that? So God is not incapacitated when it comes to doing what he has said he will do or what he has promised he will do. No, not at all. A thousand times no. Glory be to God. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 20, watch this. Let, let me show you. Ephesians 2, 20, watch this. This is very important. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, in the King James, watch. It says, um, no, no, sorry, chapter 3, not chapter 2. Chapter 3, verse 20, watch. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I believe everybody needs to come to this knowledge of this truth. And then have it as at the back of our mind to power us all through this year as we walk with the spirit of god he said now unto him are you seeing that that is able to do and his ability to do is exceeding abundantly far above all that we can ask or think according to his power that worketh in us are you seeing that when it comes to ability power to do anything. God is not incapacitated. No. Not at all. A million times no. The ability to perform is with our God. Glory be to God. Our God will never and can never fail. It's not possible. It's not possible. You know? You know? So, concerning God's promises for us, you know, so we need to, what we need to just know is that all of, like I wrote here, I said, let me use my glasses, because this is very important, I need, I need to read this to you. I need to read this to you. He said, and with the, he said, I wrote here, I said, as far as God is concerned, there is no deficiency with God or performing his promises. God's promises are sure. Jesus is God's promises fulfilled for everybody jesus is god so in order to say for anybody to think that oh god the promise of god i am not seeing god's promise or am i going to see it? what do i need to do one thing you need to understand first of all is that jesus is the fulfillment of all of god's promises anything good every good thing that pertains to life and godliness that God has promised all of us as his children. Jesus is God's promise or promises fulfilled to us. Amanda Gete, I need to say that again. Jesus is God's promises fulfilled. So if you want to look at the promise of God, if you want to see God's promise, you know, and you want to enter into it. You want to be able to enjoy it. You want to have it as an experience. A physical exp living experience in your own life. All you have to do is to turn to Jesus. Because Jesus is the embodiment of the fulfillment of all of God's promises. Someone say, Apostle, what, are, what do you mean by that? Alright, let's look at Acts chapter 30. From verse 38 and 39. The book of Acts of the Apostle. Chapter 30. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 32 and 33. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 13. Oh, what did I say? Sir? 
<laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Acts 13, verse 32 and 33. All right, watch this. I did it to see. Watch. The Bible said, and we declare unto you. These are the disciples talking to the people. He said, and we declare unto you glad tidings, which means good news. What, so what he's saying is that we are we are declaring, we are proclaiming, we are telling you joyfully good news. What is the good news? How that, watch you, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, everything God said that he was going to do, that he promised his people, all the way from the time of Genesis to Malachi. Now, he says in verse 33, watch, watch that. In verse 33, he says, God has fulfilled god has fulfilled god has fulfilled all the promises that god made every good promise that he made wherever you can read them whether in malachi whether in david in psalm whether in ezekiel whether it's in uh, first king second king somewhere or exodus uh, 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 deuteronomy wherever any promise you can read any promise you can find God has fulfilled the same unto their unto us, their children. What did he do? In that he had raised up Jesus again. So, wh what is he saying? Jesus' resurrection is the fulfillment. It is inside of it. The fulfillment of all of God's promises are, are complete or achieved. Jesus lived to pay the price for all our wrongs. All the wrongs written in the Bible. All the wrongs that the Lord said must happen to anybody who breaks the law. Who does, who does not keep the law of God. Jesus came and paid the price for it. According to Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. The NLT translation of Galatians 3 13. Jesus came and paid the price for all our wrongs. You know. Whatever was called a wrong that is written in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the, book of, in the books of the law. Are you seeing that? So, the wrongs that were written there and the punishment that will follow that wrong. Jesus came and lived a perfect life in obedience to the law without breaking one of it. Are you seeing that? So, he now actually had to die again. After keeping the law without breaking it, he now had to die the death, the penalty, the death which is the penalty for doing wrong. Meanwhile, he didn't do wrong. He kept all the law. Are you seeing that? So Jesus has paid the price for all our wrongs. Watch this. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. I'm showing you Bible. God punished the devil. Are you seeing Bible? He said, but Christ has rescued us. Did you see that? Christ has, re he's not going to, he has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, when Jesus was hung on the cross, watch, 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 watch. He took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoings. So you see, whatever the law prescribed as wrong and the punishment for that wrong, Jesus kept the law, so he was not supposed to fall under the categories of being punished for the wrongs that the law prescribed for breaking the law. Are you seeing that? So the Bible said what Jesus did was for us on our behalf. He has rescued us. He has freed us from the wrong. So the Bible said God now raised him from the dead as the sign of the fulfillment of God's promises. So all of God's promises has been fulfilled. They are done. You don't have to pay any price to see the promise of God come to pass for you. Are you seeing that? Don't let anybody preach you need to do X, Y, Z. You need to pay a certain price for the, for, for, for the promise of God to come to pass. And then the only place they will read to you is in Deuteronomy 28. If thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and diligently keep all that he commanded you, then you shall be blah, 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 blah. You know, that, that is true. 
before the coming of Jesus. But Jesus came and kept all the commandments, diligently hearkening to the voice of the Lord God, to obey, to observe all that he commanded. So Jesus lived his whole life without breaking one law. He was obedient to God in all things. Yet, he now still went to the cross to go and die and pay the price for wrongdoing. Are you seeing that? Two different things. He lived a perfect life, yet he still went to die the death for wrongdoings on our behalf. So right now, the punishment for wrongdoing, the consequences for wrongdoing was laid on Jesus on the cross. So he died. Now God now raised Jesus back to life to fulfill all his promises to everybody, all his children. That means once you become born again and you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you like it or not, you are blessed. No wonder. The Bible said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus. Without demanding, he has, placed, he has blessed us rather with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Without requiring anything from us, without demanding anything from us, he blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So right now, if you want to enjoy God's promises, if you want to enjoy everything God has ever promised so that you don't have to pay any price. Look, let me tell you, fasting does not make the promise of God fulfilled in the life of anybody. No, it's good to fast. Prayer does not make anybody the promise of God fulfilled in the life of anybody. It's good to pray. You can, I'm not, I, I pray a lot. Even before coming, I've been praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. Because I believe in prayer. A believer must pray. You see, but those are not the things that makes the promise of God fulfilled. That brought the fulfillment of the promise of God. No. The promises of God were fulfilled by the sacrifice of Jesus. So God raised him from the dead to show the approval that truly those promises are fulfilled. You don't have to do anything to enter into them. To see them manifest in your life anymore. You don't have to do nothing. Nothing. You don't have to do nothing. I'm telling you. Glory be to God. Now, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians, very clearly, chapter 1, in verse number 19 and 20. We need to look at that in NLT translation. It's very important. Before we run along, because I'm going to show you how to apply this, this fulfilled promises. How to apply it to your life so that it can become evidentially manifested. You see, that's why people are running from pillar to post. They are going from one mountain to another mountain. That's why a lot of Christians are becoming deceived. The agent of Satan, rather, the agent of darkness, are beginning to deceive believers on social media. They will tell you, go and take garlic, put inside water, put your finger inside, say what you want, and God will answer you. There is nothing like that. Those are agents of Satan. They are demonized women on Instagram, TikTok, on Facebook. These people are demonized. They are agents of Satan. Anything that takes your attention away from Jesus is not of God. It's satanic and demonic. Anything that, because Jesus is the one the Father used to pay the price, in fulfilling those promises. So God now raised him from the dead as an approver that in my son Jesus, all the promises have been fulfilled. You don't have to pay the price for, from, for you to witness or to experience God's promises. You don't have to. Look at this. In 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1, verse 19, he said, for Jesus Christ, are you seeing that? Specifically, Jesus Christ, the son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one whom Silas, Timothy, and I preach to you. Watch. And as God's ultimate, yes. So anytime you face Jesus, whatever it is you need, you know what that means? God is saying, yes. You got it. <laughs> of course, God trusts you. You are not going to ask God that you want to be a prostitute. He should bless you for being a prostitute. He trusts you so much. You won't do that. You won't do that. God trusts you that you will not say, God, help me. I want to kill somebody. I want to go and destroy somebody's life. You know, help, you know, let the promise come to pass. Let me succeed. You know, God trusts you so much. He won't let you. He knows you won't ask him for such a thing. But everything that has to do with 
godliness and good things in this life. It is Jesus is the symbol of God saying yes. Once you face Jesus and you say in the name of Jesus, God does not have to tell you yes. Jesus is the yes. Did, did you get that? Jesus is God's yes because he is the fulfillment, the embodiment of the fulfillment of all the promises. So whatever it is you want and you say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I need you to help me. Help me with this connection in Jesus' name. That you are conscious of Jesus. You are mentioned that Jesus is in your mouth and in your heart. What you, are, what you have that you, you, you need to know is that what you have is yes. That's who Jesus is to us. He is God's yes to all of God's promises. <laughs> Hallelujah. So watch this. He said, he always does what he says. Next verse. Verse 20 now says, watch verse 20. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, precious Father. Verse 20 now says, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. So there is no part of the promise of God when you turn to God, that God will say no. You know, unfortunately, there are some ministers who preach that sometimes God say yes. Sometimes God say no. There is no no and yes in God. Otherwise, God will vary. And the Bible says there is no variableness in God. There is a shadow of turning. It doesn't change. So, all you find in God is yes. And once God says yes, he wants you to be patient. He says you, you have need of patience. After that, you have done the will of God. What is the will of God? That you should ask what you want. Then be patient. Let God work it out for you. Are you seeing that? You see, that working it out part is what some men, simply because of their ignorance, they say sometimes God say no. You know, I remember I went to preach somewhere. In this, I was invited as a guest speaker in this big church. You know, as I was preaching, I told them, I said, do you know, God never says no to, all, to believers. You know, one man of God stood up there. He said, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. What kind of a, what kind of a gospel or a message is that? Apostle, what kind of a thing is that? In, the, in, in front of everybody. So the ushers were going to tell him. Well, I told him, I said, no, no. You could leave him. Leave him. You know. Let him express himself. It will help us all. So I now asked him publicly. Can you show me where God says No. I'm talking about the new creation. A member of the body of Christ. Can you show me just one? If I see one place, I'll be okay. I didn't say two. I said just one. Hey, he said there, there's, there's not, uh, there, there, there's, you know, he was just stammering. I said, you see, you can't find it. But I can show you series. Several scriptures. That, like this one. If, look, once you ask the Father for anything, in Jesus' name, what you get is yes. But what God does is this. He said, once, he has, once you have said in Jesus' name, which means yes from God to you, you have need of patience. Because now you have asked him to go do something for you. To help you take care of stuff. To help you make something a reality. So he said, you have need of patience. After you have done the will of God. Because he now begins to work on your behalf. Maybe there are some people that are not supposed to be there. Who envies your success, your succeeding? God has to carefully and gradually, by showing them mercy, He's not going to kill them, but rearrange your own life, your own path, so that your success can actually take place without them envying you. Do you see that? Helping them in, in His mercy as well. And you see how God works. So that's, that path is what people ignorantly term as God saying no. So when somebody buys that, that sometimes God can say no, the devil will begin to use that wrong thinking to create wrong believing in your heart. And once you start believing wrongly, because your thinking is wrong, James says, tell that person he cannot receive anything from the Lord. It's not that God is withholding anything from you. He cannot receive because his mind is telling him right now, God is saying no. So even he himself will not continue to believe, to have faith that the thing will, the thing will happen. 
Are you seeing what I'm saying? So you have to be very careful who you listen to. The kind of messages and teachings you listen to. God never says no to us. Never. Even if the thing is so complicated and so scattered, he never says no to us. He will just, what he will say is, be patient with me. Let me work it out. How he will do it is not our responsibility. And it is not something that should bother us. He said, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the righteous. He knoweth how. Leave the how to him. Our own is to believe for the end result. Are you getting it? So this year, don't expect, don't let anybody tell you that whatever it is you desire or you are asking God for, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that God is saying no. No, God will never say no. Look at it now. I didn't say it. Look, he said, uh, he said, for all the all, all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding, a resounding yes. So as far as Jesus is concerned, you see, when me I say yes, you can hear the sound of my the sound of my yes. Yes, you can hear the sound, and you see my lips move. Are you seeing that? The sound of God's yes is a person. And his name is Jesus. Until you realize that. And with him, there is no variableness. He said, I am the Lord, I change not. He doesn't change from yes to no. No to yes. It, God will never, God forbid, never. There is no variableness with him. Neither any shadow of turn. He never casts a shadow. He said, for God is light. God is light. Ambatoriada. There is somebody that is listening to me right now. Glory be to God. The Holy Spirit is ministering to my heart. You are listening to me and you are at a point where you have become so confused about Christianity. You know, because you think that God is far away from me and he's not hearing you. God is. He has heard you. But the truth is that you don't know and understand this truth of how spiritual things works. So that's why he's brought me your way right now. He's brought me your path. Right now. Glory be to God. Now, let me show you something to buttress what the Holy Ghost is saying to us. There's a scripture I need to share with everybody. Watch this. Um, let me just shoot, let me just, uh, shoot this quickly. In, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse, verse 16 to 18. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. Watch this. The Holy Ghost just pumped pump it in my heart you know, to help you. This is very important. Watch. He put it in, in the King James that Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 16 to 18. Watch. It says, For men verily swear by a greater. You know, when two people want to go into business and they want to assure each other that this one will not cheat this one and this one will not cheat this one. So it's going to be mutual respect, mutual everything. You see that the Bible said they will swear. Those two men, they will swear or take an oath. So that oath is by something greater than them. They will swear to the thing that is greater than them. So he said, for men verily swear by the greater and an oath to com uh, for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. So because of that oath and that thing that is greater than them that they swore by, they will not cheat each other. Because that thing they swore by, we deal with them. We judge them. We punish the one that went against the oath. Alright. Verse 17. So watch verse 17. Verse 17 now says, Where in God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, those of us that are God's children, the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. So God himself swore just to guarantee us that everything Jesus paid the price for, and that he raised Jesus as a fulfillment of the promises of God for. God swore that he will never, he will never attempt to disrupt it. He will never attempt to tamper with it. That's why Jesus to us is God's yes. There will never be a time that Jesus will be to us as God's no. Never. It will never happen. Men swore by something greater than them to confirm that the promise they made is so.
The Bible said, God himself swore. Are you seeing that? He swore to guarantee you and I that the promise that Jesus died for and was raised to be a guaranteed promise for every child of God is, remains the same. Glory be to God. I don't care whatever, whatever your mistake, your shortcoming. The guarantee of the promise is not, pre is not predicated on your actions or inactions. It was predicated on the price that Jesus paid and the Father raised him up as a fulfillment, as a guarantee of that the promises have been paid for. Alright, so watch. Let's read the game. Watch. Where in God, remember those people that men take oath, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. Quickly, verse 18. Please put verse 18. Sharp, sharp. God punish the devil. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, two immutable things that God cannot lie to show that God will never lie. What are the two immutable things? God promised and God swore an oath concerning that promise. Are you seeing that? He promised Jesus to everybody is my yes. As far as Jesus is alive and living, that I will never say no to anybody. Jesus is my yes. Woo! Hallelujah! And then said, even though that is my promise to you now, he said, I swear. The Bible said, by two immutable things, the promise of God and the oath that God took, in which it was impossible for God to lie, he said, we who have actually heard the gospel and are convinced about the, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, we might have strong consolation. Woo! Hallelujah! By the promises and the oath of God, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that, the hope that is set before us. That's why we came to be born again. That's why we came to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Because Jesus is a sure foundation. He's a foundation of yes that would never, under any circumstance or pressure, become no to us. So this year, we are guaranteed every good thing that has to do with life and godliness, they will manifest for us. Woo, hallelujah. They will manifest for you. Wherever you are listening to me, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree that that thing that has been the cry of your heart, the one that you are not able to, able to tell anybody, the one that you are able to share, whatever it is, that in the name of Jesus, our yes, our yea and amen, Jesus Christ, I decree that in Jesus' name, the thing has become a reality to you. It has become a manifested promise to you. In the name of Jesus, shame is far from you. Shame is far from you. Shame is far from you. He said, thanks be unto God. Regardless of our shortcoming, he giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, one of my sons quoted that for me recently. You know, one of my sons, Apostle Ezekiel, quoted that. And that thing blessed my soul, revived me, sh shot me up, you know, alive again in my spirit. You know, you know. Thanks be unto God. Regardless of our actions or inactions, thanks be to God that gives us the victory. Guess who? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus, as far as you come to God through Jesus, Jesus is God's yes. So as God is hearing what you are saying, he's saying, I can't say no now. It's not possible for me to say no. You came through my yes. And I've promised and I've made an oath. I swore an oath that I will never Two immutable things. I will never lie to you. Abarende Sabadaga. We will never lie. Never lie. God will never lie. He swore that he will never lie to us. He swore he will never lie. He will never play games with us. He will never. Abarada. His, his nature, his holiness is at stake. His being is at stake. He said, I swear, I will never lie to you. Jesus is our yes, our guarantee that everything we require by God, it's yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That's why he said, do all things without murmuring. Don't murmur, don't grumble. Because once you have asked him for whatever you ask, and you say in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask in Jesus' name. You know what you have done? 
you have forced God to say yes because Jesus is his yes. You don't need to say, let me hear God. What is God going to answer? What is God going to say? Once you have said in Jesus' name, that means yes. Because Jesus is the embodiment of God's yes. And then God now took an oath and promised by these two things, which it was impossible for God to break, to lie. He said, look, I'm promising you. As you ask, you will get it. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, precious Father. Are you getting this? <laughs> uh, I love to teach about Jesus. I was sent for it. He said, call him for me. So, the psalmist, look at the way the psalmist put it. In Psalm 84, verse 11. Look at the way the psalmist put it. As I, get, as I round up, thank you, Lord Jesus. So, the, the, the psalmist put it like this. Hmm. Quickly, look at the way he puts it. Psalm 84, verse 11. He says, for the, Lord is, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. And nothing good will he withhold. From there, that walk uprightly. The word them that walk uprightly was referring to her because this is, this is a future thing. You know, we are the one that is walking uprightly. The word up uprightly means righteously the righteousness of jesus was given to us are you seeing it you know so we are the righteousness of god in christ jesus he says so he will give grace he will, uh, uh, the lord is our son and a shield you know why is he son and shield because when the blessings of god begin to manifest and then somebody is envious somebody wants to do us bad he shields us the same god that is bringing the blessing shields us so he said this is i love this part he said the Lord will give grace and glory. That's the dispensation we are living in now. The dispensation of the grace of God. And because of God's grace, we have come into the fullness of the glory of our God. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 14, he said you were called by our gospel to be saved so as to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, he gave gr grace so as for us to come into the fullness of his glory. And remember, According to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, the Lord supplies all our need according to his riches in glory. See, but that glory, for it never to lift, for it never, for us never to be on the wrong side of the glory. Are you seeing that? He gave grace. The Bible said the Lord gave us grace. And what is grace? The grace of God over any child of God, over anybody, is a statement to get what you, de you desire, but you do not deserve. That's the grace of God. Glory be to God. What I am not qualified to get, but I'm getting it. Woo! And God supplies it from his glory. Are you seeing that? So this year, be encouraged. Be strengthened. Don't give up. Keep believing. Thank him every day. Because the promises are sure. In, in, Ro, in Romans chapter 9 verse 9 he said according to the time of life he said he will return that's what he said <laughs> no put Romans chapter 9 verse 9 in James glory be to God let me round up <laughs> let me close <laughs> Romans 9 9 Romans chapter 9 verse 9 look at it he said for this is the word of promise at this time Will I come? And Sarah shall have a son. The promise is sure. He said, but it's had to be walked at a particular walking. Because there's a walking to it. That's why he said, at this time, there's a walking. There's a period that is going to be convenient. It's not saying no. There's a convenient period. Wait. He said, when God shows up, it never comes late. <laughs> it never comes late, I'm telling you. You may be confused. I am not a you may be confused right now. You want to make decisions. You don't know what to do. You don't know whether to choose this or that. You are surrounded with so many options. So many things confusing you. But hear the word of the Lord. No, don't worry. Relax. Keep giving him thanks. He will show up for you at the right time. He said, he that believeth shall not make haste. Why are you in a hurry? Why are you giving up quickly? He that believeth will not make haste. That's what he said. Because you believe. So why are you in a hurry? Relax, man. Relax. 
He said, it will come. The promise is sure. But it will come at the right time. Don't worry. Relax, man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Romans chapter 4, verse 20. Maybe I should give you that before I check out of here. Glory be to God. Let me, show, let me share that with you. In Romans chapter 4, verse number 20. Abonde Gedi Yada, Satabada. Romans 4, 20. He said he staggered. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That's where I want you to. That's why I want to get you this year by the help of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Staggered not at the promise, even as you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Staggered not, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Hallelujah! This year, leave that to you. We are going to show forth the goodness of God. We will manifest the glory of God, the beauty of God, the kindness of God, the riches, the protection. There is going to be all kinds of supernatural arrangement for you and I this year in the name of Jesus. Don't give up. Don't fret. Don't throw in the tower. Hang in there by faith. Because by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we have fled for refuge. We have gone. We have we ran to him. Because we have seen that there are two things. He has staked himself up or on for our sake. <laughs> and there's nobody bigger than him. So he swore by himself. <laughs> he used himself to swear. The whole of his nature, his holiness, he used it to swear. that he will never say no to you and I. He will never lie to us. The promise is yes. Glory be to God in heaven. Father, thank you for everyone that is watching. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that this year, in Jesus' name, by all means, the Holy Spirit will bring your heart to a place where it becomes steady on Jesus. So that everything you desire can find reason to manifest. Jesus said, the Father has loved you because you love me. See, Jesus should be our focus, our target. In Hebrews chapter 2, he said, but we see Jesus. That's what he said. In chapter 12, he said, looking unto Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, as we behold him, like in a mirror, in a glass, we are changed from one level of glory to another. And that change is not because we punish ourselves, our flesh. No, he said, by the Spirit of God. Relax. <laughs> Relax. I'm telling you, it's all done. It's set to, it's set to glory be to God. This devil that looks as if he's Worrying you, disturbing you, making noise around you, his end has come. In the name of Jesus. He said, and Satan left him. Therefore, I decree in Jesus' name, the devil has left you. That challenge has left you. Delay has left you. Setback has left you. I speak it as an apostle of Christ. And I demand that in Jesus' name, you are free. Satan, let them go free. Everyone that you are molesting, let them go free. Free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Now, quickly, we, you know, we will not end our broadcast without giving you opportunity to give. You know, this is the first time after all the entrance into the new year that we are doing our broadcast. I want to ask you to support us this year. Don't let go. Don't let go. As you and I make up our mind to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, Wherever you are, whether in Canada, America, in UK, London precisely, or anywhere in Europe, or whether you are in Qatar, Dubai, uh, Saudi Arabia, in Kuwait, or, or you are in Iran, in Australia, or, or you are in China, or maybe by the grace of God you are in the Philippines, you know, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Zambia, Kenya, Ghana, anywhere in Nigeria you are, I need you to be a part of it supporting us even if it's hundred dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month a thousand dollars a month let the lord god use you let jesus respond to jesus by his spirit help us to bring this good news of jesus to our generation all over the world and the lord bless you for it now if you want to give right now whether you are in if you are in nigeria you can use any one of our bank here zenit bank 1001 488 167 or access bank 
0101-686-4374 or GT Bank is 001-686-4121. Now, if you are outside of Nigeria, anywhere you are in the world, whether in Canada, in America, all of you that have been supporting us, thank you so much. But, you know, we still have a lot more to do for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, let me encourage you to be part of it. You know, right now, everybody, take up an offering. Use your phone. Whether it's your phone you are using, or you are using your iPad, or laptop, or desktop, whatever device you are using, send us an offering. Let the Lord use you to help us. Encourage us. Because we are not here to deceive anybody. But we need money to do what we are doing for the Lord Jesus. So wherever you are, outside of Nigeria, you can use our international giving platform. And you can go to Google or Play Store. Download Guarantee Trust Bank. Guarantee Trust Bank Nigeria. Just download Guarantee Trust Bank Nigeria. The SWIFT code is G-T-B-I-N-G-L-A. I'm going to say it again. The SWIFT code is G-T-B-I-N-G-L-A. And the U.S. dollar account is 001-686-4145. The Great British Pound account number is 001-686-4169. The Euro account number is 001-686-4179. May the Lord bless your giving and multiply your seeds so in the name of the Lord Jesus. And on that day, when we all shall stand before Jesus Christ, may he tell you, well done for supporting us financially. God bless you. I love you. And until I see you on the next broadcast, this is AVJ, Apostle Victor James. Guess what I'm about to do? I am signing up. God bless you. Bye-bye.